Hi everyone and welcome back to our Revision channel. This week's focus will be on the significance of ignorance and want in Steve 3 of A Christmas Carol. Before we begin, please make sure you have your flashcards and a pen so that you can keep making your notes as we go through this video. Before we look into both characters, we will need to remember what life was like in Victorian Britain. The Poor Law of 1834 was amended to reduce the cost of helping the poor. Those desperate for assistance were sent into workhouses. The working conditions were abhorrent and left many feeling miserable and desperate. Ultimately, Dickens used his novella to represent the failings of Victorian society as it did not meet the basic needs of children and those living in poverty. The ignorance of society was monstrous because it demonstrated a willingness to overlook the state of deprivation of children who relied on society for their protection. To best represent these failings, Dickens uses the allegorical figures ignorance and want to address the conditions of the poor during the time in which he was writing. Scrooge is forced to look upon society's most vulnerable and is confronted by his own selfishness and avarice. The characters, ignorance and want were used to highlight social injustice throughout Victorian society as it extended down to innocent children and nurtured them into becoming victims of such ignorance at such an early age. The characters of ignorance and want appear towards the end of Steve 3 when the ghost of Christmas Present's time is quickly running out. The ghost issues Scrooge a grave warning about his own ignorant attitude towards the poor. It is highly significant that the Ghost of Christmas Present shows Scrooge the characters of ignorance and want. Through this, Dickens emphasises that these societal ills exist in the present. They are undeniable and society must act now to eradicate them. He emphasises that no excuse could be made for not helping them as Scrooge quickly comes to find out. So it is interesting in my opinion, in many people's opinions, that Dickens uses children to represent ignorance and want. If we look at this quote, okay, we can see that Dickens is imploring his readers to recognise that children are the responsibility of all of mankind, okay? So we have here the fact that a stale and shriveled hand like that of age had pinched and twisted them and pulled them into shreds, okay? You could focus on the fact that them, there's no identification, there's a lack of identity there. The fact that, you know, Dickens isn't taking his time to name these children. He's given them a blanket name of ignorance, a blanket name of want, because all of the poor are experience in this okay but as i've said there if we were going to zoom in you might decide to focus on the word pinched the words twisted and the word pulled because they are violent and aggressive verbs which suggests that these children have been hardened by the ignorance of society they've been forced to grow up they've been forced to witness abject horror and squalor and poverty um and therefore they've got no innocence okay they've got no, they've got no kind of hope if you like for the future so dickens is emphasizing that the children are the responsibility of mankind however these children have been simply abandoned due to their family's social position so again it's this idea of the poor being at the bottom of the hierarchy and the wealthy are ignoring them. The government are choosing not to act on it. They're just putting them into workhouses and doing nothing to actually address the issues. Okay, The fact that they've been pinched and twisted and hardened by the reality shows that they are losing their innocence. Okay, they are no longer children. They cannot be happy and oblivious to what is going on around them. They have got to grow up and realise that life isn't fair. Okay, so Dickens is trying to shock his readers. He's trying to make them these children sound much older than what they are, so that we can see that even the youngest people in society were deeply, deeply affected by poverty and choices made by wealthy people. So to do this, 
Dickens, as we will all be aware, uses lots and lots and lots of adjectives to depict people. But in this sense, he's depicting the children as hideous, vile creatures. So we've got the quote, wretched, abject, frightful, hideous, miserable. And as you will notice there, that is listing. OK, he's listing these adjectives, which all mean quite similar things. OK. So Dickens is using these adjectives to shock us, to show us that these children, you know, are aged by poverty. They are miserable. They cannot experience any happiness whilst they are young. OK. And that directly juxtaposes with the scene that came previously where he's talking about Fred's happy home with his, you know, bright and jovial guests. This comes at a time when there's a complete stark contrast um, and that's just to add further the shock of how poverty has deeply, deeply impacted the most vulnerable members of society. So if we focus first on the word wretched, OK, which is in a very unhappy or unfortunate state. These children are being described as wretched. Despite their age, they could be three, they could be ten. Despite their age, they are already so unhappy because of how their life has turned out. Abject. So they've got no pride, no dignity, okay? They've not been taught how to behave. They don't know what it what it means to be, you know, a proper citizen. So they've got no pride, they've got no they've got no dignity, they don't take care of themselves because they don't know how to. Frightful. So unpleasant, serious or shocking. So the, the, he's talking now about how they look. They look frightening. They don't look human. Hideous again, you could say. Ugly. They're disgusting to look at. Scrooge is absolutely appalled when he sees these children emerge from underneath the the spirit's robes and that's because he's not used to seeing it seeing this sort of poverty right in front of his face okay dickens is being completely honest he's trying to highlight the truth and he's not trying to sugarcoat it he's trying to be as honest as possible to shock the reader and then finally we've got miserable so unhappy again so from these five adjectives we can we can gather that these children are not happy they are not they are not what ch you would expect children to be okay they are miserable they are subjected to oppression and that quote that listing identifies that Okay, so following on from that, we've got a continuation of more adjectives and more listing. So it's almost like Dickens or the narrator is in a state of shock as he's listing everything he can see. It's almost like a stream of consciousness, okay? And he's using these adjectives to emphasise that these children are almost subhuman. They're not, they're not even human at this point, okay? And I've just decided to focus on these two words at the end of this five word list so you've got scowling so they're frowning and they've got you know anger on their faces and wolfish which further indicates that they've become animalistic the fact that you know they are ragged and wolfish it shows that they do not know any pro proper social etiquette they don't know how to behave as humans and dickens is showing showing us this as almost like a commentary for how the poor were viewed in victorian society they were viewed as being lazy immoral people who didn't make the right choices and these children directly juxtaposed with fred and his guests in the previous scene and that is again to show us that poverty has dehumanized these children and as you know as readers we are shocked to learn that these children don't know how to behave and um, this is based on dickens dickens's own personal experiences and when he went into ragged schools and workhouses and things like that and he witnessed firsthand how london society treated such children um, and how these systems were actually imperfect 
because the law did not require all, all children to attend school. It shows that ignorance is continuously breeding and breeding and breeding, which is resulting in these children being almost left behind. In this quotation, we can quite clearly see who Dickens blamed for the social injustice that occurred in Victorian society. The Ghost of Christmas Present clearly states, they are man's and they cling to me, appealing from their fathers. This declarative sentence coupled with the powerful verb cling emphasises the innocence of these children and how they are being failed by the ignorance of mankind. They are being forced into a life they do not understand and cannot escape from due to capitalism and a lack of education. This is an interesting perspective as it mirrors Marley's admission that mankind was his business, as he shows remorse for not being a more compassionate and charitable person when he was alive. Perhaps Dickens is emphasising that we are all responsible for each other and we need to do more to protect the vulnerable members of our own society. The verb cling also connotes that these children are innocent victims who live in constant fear. They are almost seeking refuge from Scrooge and try to hide from the harsh society that Scrooge actually believes in. The verb appealing could also suggest that these children want to change but do not have the means or resources to do so and are therefore condemned to the same fate as their parents. Finally, we see that Scrooge is partly responsible for the birth of ignorance and want. He is recognised as being one of these fathers that are responsible for oppressing the poor. So all in all, Dickens is blaming the rich, the wealthy, those that are in charge, those that have the means to help them but refuse to do so. So now we're going to focus on the character of ignorance. Ignorance is defined as having a lack of knowledge or information or the state of being unaware. In this context, Dickens is highlighting the lack of education across Britain, both within the working classes and the poor and among the upper classes, the wealthy. So the Ghost of Christmas present states, this boy is ignorant, this girl is want, beware them both and all of their degree, but most of all, beware this boy, for on his brow I see that written which is doom, unless the writing be erased. By constructing ignorance as a young male, Dickens is highlighting the lack of education the poor in Victorian Britain received. They are therefore ignorant on how to behave in a normal fashion. Dickens implores his readers to see the injustice of these ragged schools and workhouses in that they continuously bred criminals who did not actually solve the problem that was at hand. Dickens suggests that this ignorance inevitably led to want. If people were not educated and equipped with the skills to work, this would only lead to natural want and a cycle of poverty. Dickens highlights the significance of education in breaking this cycle and proposed this was the only way to save the poor from a life of abject misery and want. The verb erased also could support the fact that Dickens believed that education was the way out for these poor people and therefore it should be accessible for everybody. The warning given by Dickens through the use of the verb beware also indicates that this character is depicted as the most dangerous aspect of society from both the rich and poor as he prolonged the social problem of poverty. It is a continuous cycle that only resulted in want and need. The noun doom also reinforced Dickens' warning as he compared the British system to hell and one that was designed to instill ignorance and continuously dehumanise the poor. So we're going to move on to want. In this context, want means a lack or to be short of something essential. This, in terms of humans, means the basic need of shelter, food, water, etc. Dickens was a huge proponent of helping the less fortunate and advocated for better systems to be put in place to remove ignorance and want from society. The inclusion of want in his story demonstrates how the poor had been forgotten and neglected by the richer members of society. By constructing want as a young female, Dickens perhaps symbolises the sheer lack of resources and the need experienced by the poor. At the time in which Dickens was writing, many Victorians would have used the term want to signify that the poor were needy. 
This lack of basic necessity was due to living in poverty. With no means of improving their situation and with no help from society, many people were doomed to live in a life of squalor, desperation and complete misery, as well as being in want of assistance. So when Scrooge initially sees ignorance and wants emerge from the the ghost's robes, he says, are there any refuge or resource? It is interesting that Scrooge attempts to reconcile his ignorance here. It's clear he wants to help those that are in desperate need. He is confronted by the horror of poverty and immediately wants to intervene as he sees it firsthand. The spirit's immediate retort, are there no prisons, perfectly encapsulates society's ignorance towards the lower classes as they are treated as nothing more than criminals. Furthermore, this echoes Scrooge's ignorance at the beginning of the novella when he refuses to donate money to those that are in want. He is shown to be continuously ignoring those that are marginalised and states that he supports the institutions that criminalise the poor further growing the disparity between the rich and poor in Britain at this time. Many Victorians believed that the poor were lazy and immoral, and poverty was a direct result of this. They blamed the working classes for making themselves poor, and therefore did not attempt to assist them, as they believed that it was not their duty. This shows us that ignorance and want are interleaved, and the cycle was extremely difficult to escape from because of all the prejudicial attitudes and contempt for the poor at this time. So why did Dickens do this? Dickens was an advocate for social justice. He wanted society to treat each other fairly and equally. He addressed these issues in his novella to hold a mirror up to his readers and have them question their own morals and actions towards the poor. The qualities shown by each ignorance and want are the consequences of inequality, of a social hierarchy, of the lack of welfare and a lack of education for all. Ignorance is bred out of a lack of education and want only occurs when one is unable to provide for themselves or to attain employment, for example. By including ignorance and want in his story, Dickens emphasises that poverty, crime and other such miseries are a cycle rooted in experiencing ignorance and want in childhood. By depicting them as children, Dickens hopes that his readers will feel urgency and pity for the poor and therefore take action to address their own prejudices against the most vulnerable people in society.